Welcome back everybody to Selly's Mistake Factory. The last episode you guys saw us do the Raycore fuel rebuild, the fuel filter and getting that all taken care of. Well, as I was doing the rebuild and getting everything reinstalled, I started checking over the fuel lines. Now, overall, they all look to be in okay condition, but if we take a closer look at this, guys, look right here. This is, you know, it's got all its markings, ABYC stuff, but right there, that. This boat's an 88, and we've got fuel line from 1984. Now, again, overall shape of the fuel hose wasn't the end of the world, but if you're going to do this, I wanted to go ahead and reroute it. I didn't like it. It was running down through the bilge. It was laying down. It wasn't secured in a lot of spots. So I said, you know what? Let's go ahead. Let's do this and let's do this right. And let's set ourselves up for success. So we went ahead. We've got some new hose from Trident and it, it meets all of our ABYC uh, expectations here. A115, low permeation, fuel feed lines, two ply, A1, blah, 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 blah. It's all these standards and all that good stuff. We got 50 feet of it here. We got two boxes of it. So we are going to jump down there and we are going to start removing fuel lines and figuring out the best way to route them to make them better and i'm going to show you a couple little tips along the way if you're going to tackle a project like this how do you set yourself up for success when it comes to rigging these things there's a couple little things for forethought ahead of time that'll make the project that much easier as you go along so let's hop down in there let's get in the engine room and let's get this thing rolling guys all right, guys, so we are down in the engine space. I've already gone ahead and I've started pulling off some of the old fuel lines. I've run new fuel lines into our ray cores and starting to get some things set up so I can show just kind of what's involved in doing all of those things. Now, one of the tools that I really like to use, not actually a tool, a part rather, are these clamps right here. These are, um, I kind of see it in the camera right there. These are zip tie saddle clamps. I like these, these are a little oversized. They screw in and they're able to hold two sets of fuel hose because we can run a bigger zip tie in there and not worry about the weight on this. So that's kind of a nice thing to have. I like using those. You can do weld mount, you can do screws. There's a bunch of different options there. This is just my personal preference for this project. And you're gonna see why in this engine room here in a second. If you take a look in my engine room here, actually, you're gonna see I've got this paneling going on in here, which actually makes it really easy to screw in because everything's dimpled right in here and equally measured for us. So we take a look and we kind of pan over to the overhead here, you're going to see I've got these saddle clamps and what I've gone ahead and done is I've already put the zip ties in place but I've left them open and you see like this case that one's going to go right down into our feed line uh, from the filter to the engine so we're going to go up and we're going to hit those zip tie points right there be able to pull this hose all the way across and again I've left them open over here as well there's already the fuel line from the tank here so this is where I was talking about being able to double up we're going to actually be able to take care of that from there as well so it's all in the planning of this stuff guys in this case like I said with that perforated paneling on there it makes it really easy to measure and make sure everything is neat straight lines and doesn't you know look like a snake going on out there so if you don't have that and if you have the room get yourself like a a, a t-square or a, you know a yardstick and measure out about every 18 36 inches leave a little tick mark and lay everything all out put all your saddle clamps in ahead of time that's going to speed up all of your wire poles and it's going to make everything look so much neater when you're all said and done like i said you can use the screw and saddle clamps like i'm doing here you can do the weld mount clamps you can do there's a bunch of different options guys none of them are necessarily right or wrong it just in this particular case the screw one works better for me in this application so now i'm going to go ahead start pulling the rest of these hoses here and uh, fighting with a little bit it's still a little chilly up here in maine and get this squared away so let's see how this all goes and i'll show you guys the finished project here in a minute let's check it out All right, guys, so that's it. This fuel line on this side really gave me a fit getting it out of there, as you probably saw in the time lapse. But we've gone ahead, we've got the fuel lines out, and we have our new fuel feed lines all in place. If you're going to notice here, guys, kind of hard to see in the video, but we've actually gone ahead and we have added length to all of these lines. Now, we're doing that for two reasons. One, I always like to leave a service uh, point on here. That way if we ever have to get a hose off, if it's getting stuck on one of these hose barbs as they do over time, we can go ahead, we can cut off six inches and still have plenty of hose and not have to replace the entire hose. The other reason is we are going to be putting in fuel flow meters. Now I'm fairly certain I know where they're going to land and I'm fairly certain what the footprint of it is. 
but I don't know exactly. So I wanted to set this up for success. If they don't show up in time, I got the hose, we're good. We can go ahead, we can start the boat, we can run it. If it does show up in time, great. I can chop the hose, we can section it in, we can put this all in place on both motors, run the network and get that all taken care of. So that's why we've done that. But if you take a look in here, guys, you're gonna see everything is nicely zip tied up like we talked about. Makes everything really easy to get at and everything's nicely dressed right there, going right down to our Raycor. So it comes from the tanks and it goes back out. We've got our valves in there. We've got everything already ready to go for that. The only thing I have left to do is on those fuel hoses, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna color code each one so we know which ones are coming from the tank and which ones are going to the engine. So when we have to do any troubleshooting down the road, we can know where all of these hoses are going. So it's a little bit of things like that that go a long way down the road for troubleshooting and just ease of operation so it's another thing we like to do here get this taken care of and make sure it's done right so that's it guys that is this week's Selly's Mistake Factory thank you guys for tuning in and hopefully you found this informative maybe there's something you want me to cover as we dig in deeper on this boat and start correcting some of the other errors we find along the way leave it down below let us know as always, thank you for tuning in. If you haven't done so yet, hit the subscribe and like button on YouTube at Selly's Mistake Factory and over on our Instagram page. And we'll keep the content coming for you guys as we continue to dig into this boat and start correcting more of the errors we find. So thanks, guys. Peace.